In this video, I'd like to talk about boiling point elevation. The first thing you need to know is that a solution or liquid boils when the solution's vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure. So let's talk about what that means. Well, we know a vapor pressure is a pressure that exists at the surface of a liquid, and you can see I've drawn out a beaker here filled with a liquid, and the surface is represented by this black wavy line up here, and these red molecules are supposed to represent individual liquid molecules making up the entire liquid. And at the surface, some of these liquid molecules are turning into vapor, they're evaporating. Others are condensing back into liquid, while others are evaporating over here and condensing. And this is happening many, many times per second, and it's generating a pressure at the surface of this liquid called a vapor pressure. The atmospheric pressure is the surrounding pressure of the entire room that this beaker is sitting in. So the, the atmospheric pressure is the pressure of the entire atmosphere in which this beaker is placed, while the vapor pressure is the pressure right at the surface of the liquid. And what you have to understand is that when those two pressures become equal, that is when this liquid will boil. So we know that there is a way to actually lower vapor pressure via Routes Law. And Routes Law says that if we were to dissolve a non-volatile solute into this liquid, represented by those green dots, it essentially crowds out the surface of the liquid thus making it harder for the red molecules to evaporate and condense and generate the same vapor pressure. So it's actually harder to boil this beaker of this solution than it is to boil the solution in this beaker. And that's because this solution has a lower vapor pressure and we have to get that vapor pressure up to the surrounding atmospheric pressure to begin boiling. So this brings up some interesting questions. So you may have heard that it's actually easier to boil water at the top of a mountain. Why is that? Well, at the top of the mountain, atmospheric pressure is actually very low. That means it's easy for vapor pressure to reach atmospheric pressure and begin boiling. Also, why do people add salt to water before boiling it? Well, think about this example here. The salt is like the green dots. If we add a non-volatile solute, such as table salt, to water before we boil it, it lowers the vapor pressure. Thus, we have to get this solution at a very high temperature, higher than normal, to boil. So it actually means that your water is going to boil at a higher temperature. Thus, you can cook your food faster. So the actual equation for boiling point elevation says that delta Tb, the change in boiling point, is equal to Kb, this is the molal boiling point constant, and this is different for each liquid, times M, the molality of the solution, and then times I, something called the Van't Hoff factor. All right, let's do an example problem. A solution of sorbitol made with 1,312 grams of water boils at 101.2 degrees Celsius. What was the mass of sorbitol in the solution? So think about what happened here. We dissolved a non-volatile solute, sorbitol, into our solvent, water. So normally, pure water has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. But now you can see here that since we dissolved the sorbitol into the water, the boiling point has gone up a little bit. And that makes sense, right? The sorbitol is acting as those green dots. It's crowding out the surface of the water, and thus it's harder for the water to evaporate at the surface, generate its vapor pressure, and boil. So we have to get this up to a higher temperature to start the boiling process. So here's our boiling point elevation equation here, and I've got change in the boiling point temperature, and I had to calculate that over here in this green box. So delta T is equal to T final, the final temperature, minus the initial temperature. And you can think about the final temperature as the temperature after we dissolved in the sorbitol. So now it's 101.2 degrees Celsius, the boiling point, minus what it initially would be without the sorbitol, 100 degrees Celsius, and you find delta T is 1.2 degrees Celsius. Kb is the boiling point elevation constant for water, and you can find this on a table. It's 0.5121 degrees Celsius per molal times the molality of the solution, and notice how this is going to give us the moles of sorbitol, so we'll have to find the mass of sorbitol at the end. We can get moles of sorbitol directly, but we'll have to do a little bit more work for the actual mass in grams of sorbitol per kilogram of water, right? This is the molality of the solution. And we were given grams of water, so I changed that to kilograms of water by dividing by a thousand. The Van't Hoff factor here for sorbitol is one, 
And you can think about the Van Hoff factor, is ba it's basically the number of things that your solute is going to split up into. So when you put sorbitol into water, it's not going to split up into multiple molecules or ions. Something like NaCl table salt splits up into two things, Na plus and Cl minus. So NaCl's Van Hoff factor would be two. But in this case, it's one so I went ahead and solved for the moles of sorbitol here, 3.07, and then I simply converted moles of sorbitol to grams of sorbitol by multiplying by sorbitol's molecular weight, and I found that we must have had 560 grams of sorbitol in this solution. So I really hope this helped you guys out. If it did, please share it with a friend and give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video.